Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Well, this is Kawempe Worship Center online service. We would like to apologize for the slight delays due to technical hitch. But God is going to bless us. We would like to welcome all our online viewers. I uh, would like you to share, share the, the page, share the link. Just before we start, kindly alert as many people as possible. We want the word of God to be spread all around the nations of the world. So kindly share, call your family in. If you're with your family, we are going to have church at home. Call your wife, gather your children in the name of Jesus, and God is going to bless you. We are going to read Psalms chapter 34, verse 1. Psalms chapter 34, verse 1. If you have your Bibles, well, you should have your Bible. Open Psalms chapter 34, verse 1. The Bible says, I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. We want to go before the Lord in worship. Just before that, we'll open with a word of prayer. And then we'll take you to the worship team. Just prepare your heart. God is going to bless you. Father, in the mighty name of our Lord Jesus Christ, we thank you. We bless you. We give you the praise. We give you the glory. We give you the honor. We thank you because you're gracious and kind. Thank you for yet another day to be in your presence. We do not take it for granted. We thank you because your word says all things work together for good of them that love you and are called according to your purpose. Father, we give you the praise because everything that is happening, even in these times and seasons, is working together for our good, for the good of the church. And so, Father, we dedicate this time unto your able hands. We pray that your anointing, your grace, your glory shall be upon this place in the name of Jesus, that your anointing shall spread forth to the nations of the world. We pray even as we worship, O oh God, that you, your name will be lifted high above all principalities, above powers, above rulers of the dark world in the name of Jesus Christ. We pray as your word is shared, as your word is preached, as your word is taught, we pray that there will be power coming from your word to change lives for the glory and honor of your name. We thank you, Lord. We bless you. In Jesus' name we pray. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Well, we'll go straight to worship. Be blessed.
give praise to God for it's no longer I who lives but Christ who lives in me. Amen. You reign over the mountains. 
You reign over the oceans. You reign over the islands, oh God. We bless you for who you are. We bless you for your goodness. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for this moment, oh God. Thank you that we see we are, we are able to come together and worship you, oh God. We thank you for every family that's watching. Visit them with your presence, oh God. We thank you for the individuals that are watching. May you fill their rooms with your, with your presence, oh God. May you comfort the sick and heal them in Jesus' name. May you touch them with your hand, oh God. Let the finger of God visit those watching in the hospitals, oh God. They look for you to you for salvation, oh God. As the servants wait for their master. Your people wait upon you, oh God. Without you, we are nothing, oh God. You breathe on us and we live. You touch us and we are alive, oh God. It is you, the giver of life. You are the Lord, our healer. You are the Lord, our provider. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you for Kawempe Worship Center. We thank you for this church of God. We continue to pray for your people, God. Bless them in, your, in their homes, God. As they worship with us online, God. Visit them with your praises, O God. May you comfort the lonely, O God. Those are discouraged, O God. Encourage them in Jesus' name. With your presence, O God. Be their source of encouragement. Thank you for healing the sick. Touch their bodies, O God. You declare healing over them. From the crown of their heads to the soul of their faith, for they shall not die, but they shall live to see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. Thank you for Uganda, Father. We bless our land. We bless our government of God. We bless our city of Kampala. We bless the borders of Uganda. We thank you for the people in hospitals. We thank you for the Ministry of Health. We thank you for Ministry of Ruth or Chain. A chain that's spearheading this operation to bring healing in our land. Bless the woman of God. Bless our team in Jesus' name. Give them more wisdom, oh God. Thank you for the 48 people that are sick with COVID-19. Lord, we speak healing at their sick beds in Jesus' name. We declare none of the 48 shall die, but they shall live to be a testimony that God is alive. And those who look upon him and call upon his name, he shall come and Say, Lord, we thank you for those people in quarantine. They are, they are, they are, they are closed off from a lockdown of God. We pray that Lord they will find you. Visit them in their rooms, in those hotels of God. May they, may they hear your voice as you, as you call them to salvation. Thank you for every every Uganda. Bless our land, O oh God. We pray that after this this thing, O oh God, after this season, O oh God, Uganda will arise. A revival fall upon the church and your people shall see you and your finger shall move up closer thank you for our friends in the United States we bless them in Jesus name keep them safe oh God protect them oh God heal the sick oh God this the United States again with a revival God one more time the Lord said he shall visit 
the, the, the state of California with a revival. the revival and that revival shall sweep across the United States the Lord is not done with the USA one more time the Lord shall shake that land and bring a great awakening oh God uphold their economy for they are still the biggest givers world mission and one more time you are going to use them to send out missionaries all over the nations of God bless Nigeria Nigeria has a call of God that nation shall be used of God Father we bless South Korea that nation is a blessing to the church they shall continue to send out missionaries so we thank you for the nations of the world we thank you for Israel your covenant people God remember them O God remember the covenant that you made with Abraham and visit them in this time may you open their eyes to see that Jesus is the Messiah and to believe on him as their Lord and Savior protect the land of Israel bless Jerusalem the city of the great king of God we thank you for the church all over the world may your church arise may this be the day that you shall pull out your spirit on all fresh we thank you and we bless you in Jesus name and everyone say amen amen, amen. amen. Woo! it's good to be alive it's a great day to be alive I'm so glad to be alive today is my birthday I, uh, I am 48 one more time one more year and I will celebrate my jubilee uh, they say 49 is the year of jubilee one more year. I can't wait for 49. Amen. Those of you that were born in April, what a blessed man. We, we are the smartest people in the world. I mean, we are left handed, we are smart. We love the Lord. I mean, even in hard times like this, we still love. Amen. Amen. Thank you, thank you, all of you that have wished me happy birthday. If you can come by my house, please don't, because you the new the new normal say stay home. Amen. Stay home, wash your hands, and uh, stay safe. Amen. Uh, well, in this room we have, uh, you, you seen uh, our worship leaders. Thank you guys. And behind the camera is Emma. And Miss, Mr. Kabunga. The interpreter. Man, we welcome you, those of you that are watching. I forgot to check who is watching, but I saw someone from Saudi Arabia. And many people watching us. Amen. Amen. Well, um, Uganda, we thank God for our nation. Uh, the Lord is still keeping us. As of yesterday, Uganda had 48 sick people with COVID-19. And no death. That's a crazy report right there. And even the 48. We believe by the end of this week they shall start to go home. I pray that there will not be there will not 
be more sick people. Uganda is going to come out victorious. We pray for nations like Italy, Spain, Spain uh, the UK, oh my God, all over Europe. Europe you know. They need Jesus. We pray that this time they will call upon the name of the Lord. The Bible says that they, it shall come to pass. And they that shall call upon the name of the Lord, they shall be saved. Amen. As Kawimpe Worship Center, the church is doing well. We've tried to keep in touch with everyone. Everyone with the phone. We've been able to call them and they're doing well. No sick among us. Remember, church, we are reading through our Bible. I was a little bit behind on time, but they would have And I was uh, one of those that were lagging behind on, on reading my Bible. I thank God for this global Sabbath. I'm catching up with those who went before me. I see Alan is uh, laughing at me. I know he's already in the New Testament. I'm still in the New Old Testament. Man, there are some hard books to read in the Bible. Especially when you are reading book, uh, names of people. And there is nothing exciting about those names. <laughs> but let's keep reading our Bible. By the end of 2020, Every member of Kawembe Worship Center, you should have read through your Bible from cover to cover. And we are continuing to do our intercession, our midnight prayer watch, pick an hour, midnight. One in the morning, two in the morning, three in the morning, one of those hours, the Lord told us to keep a watch. So the, the, midnight, the midnight prayer watch is working for us. Amen. Shall we dig in the word? Do you have your Bible with you? Can you open Genesis 8, 8.1? Genesis chapter 8. What's the time? I forgot to check my God. Okay. We will go fast. Genesis 8. That's actually the first, the first book in your Bible. So don't, don't go to the New Testament. Go to the beginning of the book. And Verse 1 says, Genesis 8 1. The, then God remembered Noah and every living thing that was, in, uh, and all the animals that were with him in the ark. And God made the wind to pass over the earth, and the water subsided. subsided. The fountains of the deep and the windows of heaven were also stopped, and the rain from heaven was restrained. And the waters receded continually from the earth. At the end of the, of the 150 days, the waters dis decreased. Amazi, amazi, megawe buka, amazi, mega dokuva kunsi, obutayosa, megawe bu, megawe buka, amazi, oluva nima, enaku, enaku echkumi, muata, no, kuzai tao. Then the ark rested in the seventh month, the seventeenth day of the month, on the mountains of Ara, Ararat. And the waters decreased continually until the tenth month. In the tenth month, on the first day of the month, the tops of the mountains were seen. 
Amazi ne gawa wuko utayo saba, tu sabu mwezo kwe kumi, mwezo kwe kumi, kuruna kuogo mbebelie, uruo mwezi. Etiko ze nsozi, nezira wika. So it came to pass at the end of the 40 days that no opened the window of the ark which had he had made. Then he sent out a raven which kept going to and fro until the water had dried up from the earth. He also sent out from himself a dove to see if the water waters had receded from the face of the ground. But the dove found no resting place for the soul of her foot, and she returned into the earth to him, for the waters were on the face of the whole earth. So he put out his hand and took her and drew her into the earth to himself. And he waited yet, yet another seven days, and again he sent the dove out from the ark. Then the dove came to him in the evening, and behold, a fleshly plucked olive leaf was in, the, in, the, in, the, in her mouth, and no one knew that the water had receded from the earth. So he waited yet another seven days and sent out the dove which did not return again to him anymore. Amen. Now, on Wednesday in our Bible study, I was talking about crisis and what comes out of crises. Usually, God uses crises to do something new. You know, when the times get dark, you know it will get brighter sooner. Usually, the day gets very dark before the dawn of the day. Crises are always a mark of a new beginning. I've had in my 48 years of life, I've seen a lot of crises. But one good news I can tell you, they never stay. They, they come and go. So I don't know what you are going through right now. Maybe this lockdown has caused you a lot of problems. And you have come to the end of your life. It seems like you have come to the end of your life. Please do not be discouraged. Please don't commit suicide. Do not give up. Remember, sorrow and, uh, and mourning may come in the night. But the Bible says joy comes in the morning. We are at the age of the dawn of a new day. At the beginning of this year, those of you that remember the exploit fellowship we had at Kawempe, the 12 hours of prayer. I was reminding, I was reminding Dr. Abedi Wanika that we said and the Lord spoke to us in that conference that I have set, the, I've, 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 I've set a button of resetting and remember, if you, you place a reset button on your phone, on your iPad, on whatever tablet you have, it goes back to factory setting. Church is a, a new beginning. It's a dawn of a new season. Something is changing throughout history. I believe after this global Sabbath, 
all over the world life will never be the same I can assure you that life will never be the same but for those of us that believe the Bible promises he will take us from glory to glory so I'm not scared a thousand may fall on my side and ten thousand on my right hand but he who keeps, who keeps me he will never slumber and so church you need to arise with him so the flood came in Genesis 7 and people died we don't have the numbers. But you know the earth was filled with people. And for 40 days the rain came. And the fountains of the deep gave up. And the world sank in a great flood. And every living thing died. Only that which entered the ark survived. No, the Bible says, found grace in the eyes of the Lord. Because he was righteous. He had done something right. He had kept his faith. Him and his sons and their and their wives, they were saved from the flood. And two of each species, animals and birds of the air. But in the story we just read, this is after the flood. The world is totally destroyed. And the Bible has said, And the Lord remembered no. And the Lord remembered no. May the Lord remember you now. May He remember every good work you have done. May He remember every sacrifice. Every, every offering. May the Lord remember every prayer and intercession you have done. The Lord never forgets. He remembers every good work. The only thing that the Lord forgets is those sins that He has forgiven. He remembers them no more. It's only you who remembers what you did in the past. But God, He forgives. And he forgets. But every good one, every sacrifice, every generosity, every, everything that you have ever done for the children of God, the Lord shall never forget. So be encouraged, my brother. My sister. The Lord remembered no. And every living thing. And all that animal and all the animals that were with him in the ark. And so he brought a great wind. And the water started moving. And, 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 and the water started moving. The wind kept on blowing. And the Bible says on a, on a certain day the ark rested on a mountain. Ararat. And the waters continued to decrease until the tenth month. So it came at the end of the 40 days that Noah opened the window of the ark. Which he had made. Remember the ark is the boat that those who survived had to live in. And I remember growing up as a kid and uh, there were these songs about the Noah, Noah's Ark in the Sunday school. And, and the way we were told that Jesus is the Ark. Whoever hides in him shall be saved from every storm of life and from every flood. And I still strongly believe Jesus is the Ark. Even in this time, Jesus is the Ark. The name of the Lord is a strong tower. The righteous run into it and they 
If you are watching us and you have never given your life to the Lord Jesus Christ, I'm telling you, my friend, you are outside the ark. You need to be in the ark if you are going to survive the floods of light. And so the Bible says in verse 7, they sent out a raven which kept going to and fro until the waters had dried up from the earth. So he was checking among the animals that Noah had taken him. He sent out a raven. A, a, a raven is an, it's a, a very funny uh, bird. They usually have black and white. And I've seen someone, some of them that are very black, no white. And if you have I've watched some of these scary movies. <laughs> you remember the Raven with red eyes, black. And their sound, the sound they make, actually scares you. <laughs> they scare you. The Raven is a very, I think they are scavengers. They, 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 they eat. They don't usually hunt. They eat that which is already dead. So the, the, the thing that you and I could never eat. Dead animals. Rotting meat. Uh, yeah. uh, so the, the ravens eat. And so when Noah no is trying to find out and the water is totally gone, he sends out a raven. And for some reason, this thing does not come back to him. And so the question is, where did this thing go? Well, you find the answer from the, the kind of food the ravens eat. So the ravens goes out of the boat. I mean, it has survived the flood. Remember, everything is destroyed except what that which was in the boat. And the raven goes out of the boat. Never comes back. There was food in the ark, I'm sure. But the raven, when he saw the dead, the dead animals, the dead body, oh my God. I, I, I remember in one of my crises during the civil war in Uganda. I, I remember walking through a football field that had, had been turned into a a killing, a killing field. And I was walking through and I was bushing. And, 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 and so you could not tell whether it was a football field before. And I'm, I'm walking through that field. And all of a sudden I stepped on something soft. And I looked down. I was a dead body. I look around, and dead bodies everywhere. I must have been like 13 or 12. I mean, this is during the war. You, you guys that have heard my story. My friend from California, Ruth Hamo, is, is almost done with the book that has my story. I took off. But, but as, as a young kid, Dead bodies are very scary things. So this is the food of a raven. So this bird goes up from the boat and find food from that which died during the flood. The very thing that you escaped. And then you try to go back to it. And then verse, and then verse 8 says, But he also sent out from himself a dove. 
to see if the water that receded from the face of the ground. But the devil found no resting place for her soul, for her soul of her foot. And she turned into the earth to me. For the water to assume on the face of the earth. So he put out his hand and took her in and drew her to himself. Now the, the, the contrast between these two birds just, just so amazing that the reverend survived the flood went from the boat and found life from that which the Lord had destroyed. And then the dam goes from the boat, flies around, and could not find a landing place for her food. Because by nature, doubts. Are, are birds of purity. They are clean. They, they, they don't touch any unclean thing. Yeah, they, so the dove came, immediately came back. And so Noah took his hand and, and drew her to himself. Back in the boat. Where is the reverend? Having a party outside, on feeding on the day. When when you read, when you bring this into into the light of the New Testament, the Bible teaches about uh, teaches us about dead works. Bible it is a comedy Dead works. In Galatians, in Galatians five. Galatians five verse sixteen. You guys still on? Please don't go off. Buy more bundles. You need to hear this. The Bible says in verse 16, I said then walk in the spirit and you shall not feel for the lust of the flesh. For the flesh lasts against the spirit and the flesh lasts against the spirit. And the spirit against the flesh. And these are contrary to one another. So that you do not do the thing that you wish. But if you are led by the Spirit, you are not under the law. Now, the works of the flesh in verse 19, this, these are the works of the flesh. It's what the Bible calls dead works. They are evidence which are adultery, fornication, Uncleanness, fluidness, idolatry, sockery, hatred, contentions, jealousy, outbursts of wrath, selfish ambitions, dissensions, heresies, envy, murders, drunkenness. Liveries and the likes of which I tell you beforehand, just as I also told you in the in time past, that those who practice such things will not inherit the kingdom of God. In the boat, there came two two birds. I can I believe this represents what the New Testament is teaching us about the walking the spirit and walking in the flesh. Now, 
after the, 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 the everything that the Lord is doing as he did in the days of Noah he started something new and then all of a sudden the revenues decided to go back to the old but the dove decided to come back in the boat my brother and sister in the boat in Christ, in the church, there are two kinds of people. Even after this COVID-19, the church will still have two kinds of people. Those who walk after the flesh and those who walk according to the Spirit. The Bible says, but they that walk after the Spirit are the children of God. For they are led by the Spirit One of the the differences that are going to emerge is so contrasting in the body of Christ all over the world. The church will be divided. It's always been divided between these two. Those who walk after the flesh, but they are in the boat, in church, and those who are led by the Spirit. Let me tell you something. Those who laid by the spirit of God. You are going to be laid on a daily basis. The world I told you will never be the same again. And so there is a lot of uncertainty all in, in the future. There are many prophets that are going to rise and tell you this is going to happen, this is the next thing that is going to happen. No one is going to give you details. They may, they may prophesy events. But very few will tell you the process. For you to know the process, you need to walk in the Spirit. For the Spirit searches the things of God. And then he, he makes them known to us. So we don't walk blindly. But for you to know what's next, the Spirit of the Lord has to lead you. Amen. Amen. And so, the Bible says, but the works of the flesh, they lead to death. They will kill you. But the Spirit brings life. I'm praying that as we go through this season, the Lord has brought us to a stand still. This is a global Sabbath. May you not only check outside the boat. May you also look in the mirror. Do not just look through the window. Many of us want to know what's happening in Europe. Last week I was glued on the TV watching what's happening in the US, what's happening in Europe, in China, over the world. But this week I just decided, you know, whatever is happening there, of course it concerns me so I can pray for them but the biggest change needs to happen on the inside of me it must be inside the boat not outside the boat so we need to understand we, God is raising up a generation of those who walk in the spirit Galatians say, six fourteen. But God forbid that I should boast except in the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ, by whom the world has been crucified to me and I to the world. I believe that's what God is trying to do in each one of us. I don't have to tell you. Everything that around us has become so useless in the last few days. I mean, work, Job, businesses, uh, achievements, 
educational. I was amazed that church was not is, is among the non essential in this season. I mean, a lot of people that we thought, oh, they are so important. They, they, the government said you, we are non essential. I mean, you already. A lot of things that we've been relying on. People have been boasting about so many things. Where are they now? Where are the land grabbers now? Where are the people that used to drive those fancy cars? I mean, a bicycle right now is more valuable than a bicycle. I saw Apostle Peter yesterday and I admired him. On a bike. Alan, he used to have a bike. And he sold it. Now he can't buy it back. He's walking to church. The only thing that we thought that we are so valuable then. Where is their value now? The only thing that we should treasure now are the things that we have in Christ. The forgiveness of sins. Our salvation. The infilling of the Holy Spirit. I mean the leading of the Holy Spirit. So that's why Paul says that, that God forbid that I should boast except in the world. Amen. Amen. In another verse he says Galatians 2.20 I've been crucified with Christ. Is no longer I who lives but Christ who lives in me. And this, these are some of the most powerful verses in the Bible. That have been crucified with Christ. It's no longer I who live, but Christ who lives in me. And the life which I live now, in the flesh, I live by faith. In the Son of God, who loved me and gave himself for me. That's a new life. Some of you have been asking, what is God doing? He's giving you a new beginning. Me and you, you should not look on the outside of the book. Look on the inside. Check your life. We cannot boast in our education anymore. We cannot boast in our titles anymore. We cannot boast in our achievements. Our talents. The material thing that we have acquired. There is nothing to boast about. We should crucify. We should be crucified with Christ on the cross. And when the life that we should live we should live by faith. Amen, child. Amen. So don't, let's not boast the things of the world. Let's not be like a raven that went out of the boat and never came back. Let's live after the down. You remember even in Matthew 4, Matthew 4, by the way, the, Jesus was filled with the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit came in the form of a dove. He a gentle boy. It teaches you humility. With the Holy Spirit, you learn the nature of God. It will teach you the life is not in the surrounding. But life is given by the Spirit of God. Amen. 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 So I'm praying for each one of you, brothers. What is that? What, what are those works of the flesh? But I've always drawn you away from the ark and gone back to the world. The world is sinking. But the boat is resting on the mountain. It's stable. The, the dove came back. And in the boat there was life. Flesh food. 
fellowship, love. But the raven fed on the dead. All the dead works in, in, in Galatians 5.19 They lead to death I pray from this season May the Lord change me May the Lord transform my life May the Lord transform your life So when this COVID thing is over It will die with a lot of Dead works. Envy. Jealousy. Uh, selfish ambition. Pride. Oh, the, 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 the thing that do not need to be next. Let's, let's read this verse before we close. Galatians 5.22 22. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long suffering, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self control. Again, a sight that is no law. And those who are in those who are crusties have crucified the flesh with its passions and desires. That's a new life. We should live in Galatians 5.22. Pray that the Lord will teach you to love. Pure love. Joy. Peace. Those of you that are panicking, peace. Give, may the Lord give you peace. Long suffering. Kindness. Goodness and faithfulness. Amen. Thank you for tuning in. Thank you for your time. I pray that after COVID 19, when you go back to work, Wherever you be, wherever you go after, may the people say you are different. Something switched within you. You are not the same one who used to know before this thing. You are a new person. And may you be a new person. May you stand and say, I've been crucified with Christ. It's no longer I who lives, but Christ who lives in me. God bless you. We love you very much. Let me invite our administrator to close with some announcements. We'll see you on Wednesday. Amen. Thank you, Pastor, for that word. We we'll just like to remind you that every Wednesday from 4 p.m. to 5 p.m. we have our Bible study online and every Sunday morning like today from 9 a.m. to 10.30 we have our Sunday online services. Amen. Praise the Lord. Well, it's time to give. Psalms chapter 116 verse 12. The Bible says, For oh, David asked, What shall I render unto the Lord for all his benefits toward me? What shall I render unto the Lord for all his benefits toward me? Praise the Lord. Amen. David was wondering what he would give to God because God had been so good to him. Amen. Amen. 
There is nothing we can give to God. Praise the Lord. So our offerings cannot be quoted to what God has done. But they are tokens of appreciation to God. So in case you have your offering, we are using mobile money lines. Praise the Lord. Our MTN number is 0782 271 0817 988 192 0757 Giving towards the, the food basket. We made a small accountability on our WhatsApp page. We have already bought over 150 kilograms of maize flour and over 50 kilograms of beans. I would like to assure you that none of our church members are in luck. And God will bless your generosity. So in case you want to give still for the same cause, you can give uh, in the same mobile money number. Amen. Amen. Thank you very much for tuning in. God bless you. Amen. Amen. Shalom.